Oh, did you guys know that Blizzard's working on a uh, survival MMO? Like, they're working on an actual survival. And uh, I don't know anything about this. But apparently this guy might. So I think it's worthwhile to give this a watch. Because they're working on a survival. And I think it'll be pretty fucking cool. Their survival game. The one where they try to get bought by Microsoft. <laughs> That was ruthless. Oh my god. For news of Blizzard's upcoming survival game last year, shortly after the company basically stealth announced the title, posting to Twitter that they were in search of people to join ah, the this. dev team for a brand new survival game set in a whole new universe. Which meant not Wait, is this only gameplay? were Blizzard making a new game, they were oh, also making an entirely oh, new that's IP and taking their first stab at the survival genre. Other than that, official details from the company were lacking, but we Arc did learn okay. much more with time. Time. At its core, it looks like their new project will be sharing many elements in common with other survival games. Think things like Ark, Rust, Grounded, and Valheim. There will be a focus on gathering resources, crafting items, and building bases. A mix of sandbox elements along with both PvE and PvP content. All of this with the expected Blizzard twist. Likely a bit of gameplay polish as one of the company's main mottos still to this day is gameplay first. And of course, streamlining of of systems and features. So industry insider Jez Corden reportedly saw Jez the game in Corden. action back in 2022, getting a look at some gameplay footage of Blizzard's work in progress, which Wait, he this said it? at the time was no, this code is named oh, Odyssey. During a podcast, he went into detail about the game saying, visually, it reminded him of both Everwild and Fable. In fact, the words that he used to describe it were fantasy, fairy tale, magic, and a touch of steampunk all coming together with that classic Blizzard finish. Steam he punk. said the gameplay showcased all of the expected survival features. There were building mechanics with players constructing bases, complex machinery, and crafting stations, all with a bit of that fantasy fairy tale twist. Apparently, there were also even mercantile mechanics where players could build their own vendor stations, setting up, say, a potion shop, for example, where they could craft unique concoctions, which then they could sell directly to other players. And all of the gameplay that he saw was in the <coughs> first person perspective, with a character who was running around using a bow and a little bit of magic casting a few spells sounds ambitious man as for the validity so this you know being that it's classified or tagged as an mmo because i think there's a there's an opportunity for a survival mmo you look at uh what's the other game that's um been worked on dune awakening that's a game that's trying to get into the survival mmo i think there is a opportunity with those two kind of blended genres but definitely sounds ambitious. I don't know. I wonder how big that world would be, though. Of these claims, in my experience, world of Jez has craft. been a reputable source. He has Weeners. leaked a lot of uh, details or that. that ended up turning out to be accurate. In fact, once this information about Blizzard's survival game surfaced, established games journalist Jason Schreier confirmed that the code name Odyssey was accurate. So with Jez Odyssey. having a good track record and Jason confirming the code name is right, I am inclined to believe the rest of those other details. In which case, yeah, the basic structure of the game sounds about like what I would expect from a Blizzard survival title. Now, another thing that we learned last year that gets me personally really excited was this game may very well be an MMO or at the very least a shared open world or MMO light. During a live stream, Talison, a well-known World of Warcraft content creator, said that he was told Blizzard were working on a Ghibli-style social MMO. Now, Ghibli-style is just referring to the visuals and settings being reminiscent and akin to the Ghibli visuals, which from some of the early concept art that we saw directly from Blizzard, uh, this survival game does seem to fulfill that at least somewhat but news of this being at least so, like when they go that direction in the art style like i think it's a little bit easier for uh like performance based stuff so being that they want like the gameplay and the performance to be like a high ticket item i could see them go in that direction 
mixed somewhat MMO, having MMO-like elements isn't all that surprising for me. For one, this fits right in line with Blizzard and the whole industry's ever-growing trend and push towards live service, always online games. Also, there was the job posting for the lead social designer for the game that stated, successful candidates will motivate players to engage with each other in ways both competitive and collaborative, forming new bonds of friendship or rivalry. We teaming up, boys. We're gonna start a cult in this game and just like straight up destroy the lands. Yo, we will convert the entire server. You couple that with some details we're gonna get into later that pretty much confirm this will be a live service game. Live service game, survival title with these multiplayer elements. Live I service think this game. Basically confirms the MMO light, the shared world nature of the game. And yeah, I read this particular posting as implying that there will be both cooperative PVE as well as competitive PVP, in which case a shared world with other players running around makes a whole lot of sense. And also I'll add that personally, I don't expect Blizzard to make anything other than live service games for the foreseeable future, honestly, because as they've done with Diablo 4, always online means always connected to the in-game store, to the season pass, and always seeing other players running around who have purchased in-game cosmetics that is just where gaming is at currently for better or worse but yet yeah, i think he summarizes that that's where gaming is nowadays like <clears throat> and you know what like i'm okay with that live service element as long as they're doing something impactful that live server element like if they're taking that subscription and actually keeping like quality servers keeping the the cheating or the hacking or the botting to a minimum or completely negligible then you know i'm happy with that it's when they charge an arm and a leg for something and they're not really keeping up in the game and and normally that doesn't really happen unless they kind of are at that point where they're like <laughs> you're gonna pay it anyways and you're gonna like it so i don't know uh i'm okay with it like i've even said like if you know being that we do a lot of diablo here if they could have the diablo 2 servers to the point where there's absolutely zero botting and zero duping i would pay for that i would pay for, for that to play and engage into that network like you can still do that in a community element but it would be nice to have that in a much wider perspective but yeah within reason right like i wouldn't pay fucking 20 dollars a month but i would maybe pay like five Talison heard from Sorcy this that this was a short social MMO. The lead social game designer job listing seems to imply the multiplayer shared world. I would not be in the least bit surprised if that is exactly what we are getting. Something else that we know for sure is that this game has been in development for roughly six years now. This information coming from Project Damn, that's pretty Craig far along. My's LinkedIn page that states he began working on the title in July 2017. Although I love videos like this where they actually bring citation. You know, when, when they can actually like back up their claims, right? I think it's important when you're making speculative judgment calls. What we don't know is exactly how much of this time was spent in pre-production. It does seem probable that it's been in full swing for maybe two, three, or four years at this point. And I say this because as of last year, the game was in a playable state. As mentioned, Jez Corden has seen the game in action. He talked a bit about that on the podcast, but also... Blizzard's president has seen and played the game. Back in January 2022, after they announced they to were play looking Tessas. to fill positions for the job, Mike Ibarra said that he has played many hours of the project with the team and is incredibly excited about their vision. Mm -hmm. Now, since the middle of last year, when I last covered leaks and information about this game, a bunch of new details have surfaced. For one, in December, we learned that the former Far Cry boss, Dan Hay, had taken the helm as general manager of the survival title during Blizzard's end of year update it was said that he would be leading the team which is infusing this genre with blizzard magic while crafting our first new ip since overwatch in that same statement they also stated that the team size had doubled over the course of 2022 and they would be adding many more positions in the future although doubling in size could mean anything when we don't know what the original number was like did they go from 10 people to 20 people or 100 people to 200 people we have no idea. However, I am inclined to believe it might be the latter and they do have a decent development team given everything else that we've heard recently. Specifically, just this past week, Jez Corden returned with some new information about the game, saying that he is roughly 90% sure Odyssey may not have just been the code name, but is going to be the actual working title for the game, or to put it plainly, Blizzard survival game is 
going to be called Odyssey, apparently. And he also believes that the game is near completion and will likely be multi-platform. On top of that, he <laughs> added things like the game doesn't appear to be super graphically <laughs> intensive, touching on the graphics again by saying that they are stylized, cartoony style, yeah. sort of akin to Overwatch based on the early footage that he has seen. But if you aren't that interested in leaks or things coming from industry insiders and you just want stuff right from the horse's mouth, well, we've actually learned a ton from Blizzard themselves. This information has been wide out in the open for a while. There are pages upon pages upon pages of job openings for Blizzard's upcoming survival game on their careers page. And these things are always fun to dig through as they tend to be a treasure trove of information about what the developer has planned. Some of which directly confirms all of this leaked information that we've seen from Jez Corden. This is just another reinforcing element for me to believe everything that he said. So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna take a look at multiple job postings which get, paint a clear picture of what they're building here. First up, there was a position for the points of interest lead designer that stated we need a lead points of interest game designer who wants to drive the creation of outstanding FPS gameplay experiences in the survival genre. The ideal candidate has a deep understanding of FPS content, gameplay, level design, and scenario design. And then it went on. I, I like that they're going first person. Uh, some people like third person. I like the element of first person. I, I think that that's kind of nice. You don't get to see like any of your like gear and whatnot that's on, but uh, I don't mind it that it's in first person. I'm really excited for this. Th this is something that I heard about like a few years back, a couple, two, three years back. I heard about this and uh, I've been like keeping my eyes open for this game. I would love to check this this game out. If there's ever an opportunity to jump on board on playtesting NDA or not, I am 100% doing it to say we need your help with leading teams to build a triple a fps first open world multiplayer spaces there is a lot jam packed in there first of all it's a points of interest lead designer so the game is going to have points of interest this isn't just going to be kind of a bog standard survival <laughs> game where you're just crafting and building your own stuff looks like they're really planning on designing a lot of bespoke areas this also confirms that the well, you kind of have to do that in like an mmo if it was like a standalone like survival maybe you could get away with not as many POIs, but even like in a quote unquote single player, single server, multiplayer server kind of thing like Rust, there's still the POIs like, you know, gas stations and the oil rigs and all these types of things. You like survival is a sandbox, man. You could do so many different things with it in general. It's just how do they all synergize together, man? The game is in first person, that it's open world, and that they've got multiplayer spaces. Now, multiplayer spaces could just mean like cooperative stuff, but so much is pushing in the direction of this is likely MMO light. This is likely shared world. Yeah, Next up, MMO we've got the light. lead building designer who says you will be the vision holder and owner of a best in class building experience on Blizzard's upcoming survival game, ensuring it feels amazing to place building pieces that players can realize their dreams of what they want to make, feel clever doing so. So, and that the result of what players build looks as wonderful as possible. In my mind, this pretty much confirms that we're just going to be getting full-blown base building elements where I don't know if it's going to be placing down pre-established walls and floors or if we're going to be doing everything piecemeal by putting down the individual logs. But either way, Blizzard's making a full-on survival yeah. game here and that is going to include all of those base building elements. The activities lead designer position said that you will create a vision that aligns with the big picture. You understand the importance of different combat scenarios in a AAA title and will apply that logic to our ambitious project. Create engaging conflicts in an open world capable of satisfying a wide range of gaming appetites. <laughs> so there is your confirmation that there will be plenty of PvE combat in the game as they're looking for someone to design these different scenarios catering to all sorts of different play styles. But it goes more and gets a lot more interesting as we go. Lead gameplay systems designer says CIA you will expand agents our best-in-class moment-to-moment gameplay to also include a host of non-combat survival experiences. What does it non -combat. mean to implement Blizzard-grade tree chopping? Why is that fun for 10,000 hours? How can players be expressive in their choice of how to approach that interaction? I love there is chopping confirmation trees. 
of the resource harvesting elements. We're going to be chopping trees. We're yeah. probably going to be mining or no, right. collecting herbs. Yeah. All of those That's elements about. of a survival game I love are it. being confirmed. The AI encounters lead designer. I love this one. Uh, you will maintain and shepherd the encounters team vision and communicate it to other discipline groups. End goal being to guide the delivery of fun, repeatable player encounters. It later stated you will prototype boss design, proving it out and iterating on it. Boom. <laughs> We're getting <laughs> boss fights, but even that, I mean, again, some of this stuff might not be at all surprising. Well, I feel like, yeah, boss fights and stuff, uh, I feel like that would almost be like a little bit standard if they're going into like an MMO light kind of version of, of whatever this survival is going to be. I'll be honest, like, you know, you guys said it in chat, like New World. One of the greatest things about New World was just going out there and farming. <laughs> like it was a lot of fun, right? Going out there and just chopping trees for however long. They did it in a way that was like really cool because you were able to get like if, if, if you can almost do like two bird one stone when it comes to like say going to grab wood yeah sure you're getting the resource for whatever you need that resource for but the thing that i enjoyed about it is like you got fundamental experience and i think when you look at like world of warcraft in the early stages like you didn't really get experience for hitting nodes on herbing and this and that but over time they kind of like changed their approach with it and they started giving you experience because Back in what was it BFA? I leveled an entirely brand new tune. I was like, you know what? I need to farm uh, material for raid anyway. So I made a brand new character. I think it was a monk, and I leveled ten levels just by picking herbs. I was like, well, I got to do this for raid anyway. So I was able to level that way, and I appreciate that being uh, an integrated part. But from like a survival MMO, I'm I'm curious how it's gonna work. Like, how is it gonna work? Like, if I die, do I lose all my shit? Do I lose all my experience? Is there experience? Is there levels? Like, you know. Because in survivals, you don't always get levels. You don't always level up. Sometimes you level up like a function, like say Valheim, you know, you, you keep jumping and you're going to level up jumping. But you look at something like, say, Rust, and there's not really like something that you would level up. It's just more material based. So how are they going to like blend that between the two? I would love to test this game surprising or unexpected but it's so it makes me so happy to get confirmation and with every new layer the game sounds more and more interesting to me including the next one world generation software engineer here it said that they are seeking someone to help build procedural oh. world building tools in a modern engine that's what i'm talking about big round of applause if they're going this way i and if they're thinking about procedural world building i wonder if the servers will be based off of like seed based it was an issue that I had with like Valheim or not Valheim um, V rising V rising. I think would have held a lot more attention with the gamer crowd. If it was procedural generated maps rather than like it being <laughs> definitive, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Monica, yes, thank you for the five yeah. My coffee is so good. It sure is. There sure is. Thank you for your five. I think the, the future of a lot of different elements of video games are gonna become in the form of procedural X, okay? So whether it be like um, adapting like the AI in more of a procedural route, and I'm trying to think of the game that I was thinking of. There was a game that we played that it was like based off of Alien Isolation, I think it was called, Alien Isolation. So Alien Isolation was a game that, depending on your playable habits, the AI would evolve their response to the way you played the game. So an example would be like, if you're running through the ship and an alien is chasing you and you always hide in lockers or in like a closet, then they're more prone to be able to get at you via your, your hiding or your playable habits. But if you change it up all the time, it would keep the AI thinking and it would... Um, it was tough. It was a tough game, but it was a fun game. But um, I think in terms of like map building, I think it just makes the game a lot more fresh always, especially for me. I love figuring things out. And if I'm always figuring something out and it's not just like static, I love it. Now, when it comes to the procedural elements here, this uh, means one of two possibilities in my mind. Either A, we are talking about entirely procedurally generated landscapes and or maps. Like Think maps, along yep. the lines of something like Minecraft or Valheim, where you yep. create a seed and it just makes a world procedurally for you. Or that these procedural tools will be used to flesh out the play space rather than having to craft every tree by hand. For example, a lot of developers nowadays uh, will use, they will basically set up the building blocks of a procedural system 
them and then they will handcraft parts of the world but when yeah. you're building these large open worlds many developers so normally like they'll have like a poi right so like they'll handcraft a static build of like a gas station or like a, sh uh, a shipping yard or something like that and then they'll say okay here's all your assets here's the trees here's the building blocks here's the rocks procedurally generate the rest of the map but then put three POIs in this map, put four POIs in this map. And then that's like how you would then, you know, kind of create your map. We'll fill things in with the procedural stuff. They'll fill in the grass, they'll fill in the rocks, yeah. they'll fill in the trees and some of the sh elevation and shaping of the world. And then they'll handcraft the more important elements and nature. And maybe one of the biggest confirmations we get from the next job posting for the senior world designer who will be creating all types of spaces ranging dungeons. from exterior zones, dungeons, and massive, massive raid-like points of interest and massive- Hey, going away. But creating all types of spaces ranging from exterior zones, dungeons, and massive raid-like points of interest, which are POIs, creating large to small PvP and AI-ready play spaces, and more. It could be fucking anything, but... Interesting. I like that there will be, like, dungeon survival, you know? Like, survival. You're going into a dungeon, like, you could... Lose the shirt off your back, right? It's like a, like a variation of hardcore, right? Like hardcore, you go out there, the typical hardcore, you go out there, you die, you're done. But then this is like survival is kind of like that, almost in between the two. You like die, sure, there's a big penalty, you lose all your shit, but then maybe you might be able to get back and get your bag and, and retain your stuff, you know? and massive raid-like points of interest, further stating they will also create large to small-scale PvP and AI-ready <laughs> play spaces and more. This is Blizzard's next MMO. This is, everything is stacking up. Forget World of Warcraft 2, forget World of Starcraft or World of Diablo. This is Blizzard. Now you just hold a second, okay? You back those statements up because I would love a World of Diablo. I would love a world of StarCraft. Okay, let's not fucking rule these out. Here's next MMO. We got open world, shared spaces, multiplayer, confirmation of PvE, confirmation of dungeons, confirmation of raids. This is it. This is the game. This is, if you've been waiting all these years, think about it, think about how many times, if you're a Blizzard fan, think about how many times in the past, like 20 years since World of Warcraft came out, how many times have you been like, man, can't wait for Blizzard to try to make a new MMO. It's not gonna be a theme park like WoW. They're not doing that. For, just forget about it. I, I do not foresee that from Blizzard. This is what they're doing. Th this is it. Blizzard survival game is also a simultaneously Blizzard's next MMO. The final confirmation that I want to clear up for you, just so there's no confusion about what to expect from this game, was the position that they were filling for the live ops lead designer. Live ops? You mean like psyops? No, we're talking about live operations like <clears throat> games as a service, who like will CIA. be shaping the long-term content gameplay. You will work with a group of people to build systems, tools, and content that keeps the game fresh and exciting for years to come. And just as I mentioned at the top, I do live not service foresee support. Blizzard not making a live service game yeah. at yeah. any point in the future unless there are drastic changes in how games and the profitability of games are done in the industry live service is where it's at live service is where yeah. the most money comes from excluding yep. mobile which is also are also live service games a lot of times talking about mobile you know a lot of people shit on mobile a lot of people kind of like shit on you know blizzard for coming out with diablo mortal but i'm gonna be honest if you owned a company and you knew that you could have a slice of the share that mobile gaming market brings in every single year, you would probably look at it from a business element of things. You know, it's it's one element of the business and they're still focusing on things that are not the mobile industry. But again, I understand and I see why they did it because the mobile gaming market in the world brings in more money than all of the console and PC gaming market does combined by not a small margin either and we're talking billions like i think the last and this is an old statistic that i read a long time ago but i think it was like 2018 or something like that that i read 2019 basically it said the amount of revenue generated from uh mobile uh, gaming versus the pc and console market they outshine them by i think like 30 billion dollars 25 
30 billion dollars like there is a astronomical amount of money to be had in the mobile gaming market even talking about sponsors as a content creator like i'm gonna tell you man you get like you get so many mobile opportunities like fucking the emails get blasted sometimes about all these different things that they want you to like check out right and you got to make your own decision but wild at how much money is in there that's why there's just so many of them but anyways this is actually mainly why i'm excited for this game because it does not seem like we're just getting a server-based kind of smaller scale survival crafting game this is blizzard's next mmo i i don't know how else to say it i'll just keep repeating it this survival game is blizzard's next yeah. mmo Open yeah, i agree with what he's saying about this next mmo right but like his you know survival mmo but chat's bringing up a couple things here like the recent numbers was 300 million from candy crush and 40 million from wow like that's insane man that's insane candy crush was one of their best acquisitions i think even in diablo immortal talking about mobile gaming again diablo immortal i think made 200 million in their first month or two when it came out like they made a crap load of money right mobile gaming mar mobile gaming is more than hollywood movie and tv tv industry i don't know if that's a fact but i would I would probably say that that could be a potential chance because I mean, the uh, the revenue for mobile gaming is insane. The world, we're going out chopping down trees, doing stuff, crafting gear. We're building our own bases. They got the designing building systems. We're gonna have PVE content, points of interest. We're gonna have dungeons. We're gonna have raids. We're going to have PVP, and it's a Makes live service excited. game. It's an MMO. It's a Blizzard. This is Blizzard's MMO it's here it's coming it's coming so what is next when when is it coming well i think there's a decent chance that we will be getting more and some sort of an official reveal and details about the game sometime this year i mean we've got both the xbox showcase you know microsoft is in the process of acquiring activision blizzard so this could show up there but then speaking of which did you guys hear about that the uk blocked the microsoft acquisition of blizzard so I wonder what's going to happen with that and if that's actually going to go through. I don't know whether or not it's going to or not because maybe they'll just say fuck that market. I don't know. I don't know. I, I am not a lawyer. I do not know the legalities of those types of things. But um, yeah, they did put their foot down. I think it was approved in in the US, but I think over in UK, they have to now go through like the process of like challenging their stoppage of the acquisition of the two companies. So. I think, yeah, Microsoft might have to buy the UK to, to make that happen. And yeah, back to the mobile gaming comment. It's like everybody has, and I sound like fucking, I sound like BlizzCon, but a lot of people, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people have smartphones, right? Like that's pretty much the only type of cell phone you can get now is, is pretty much a smartphone, right? And so most people have that and the ease of access, right? Like they, there's a thing in marketing and I can't remember what the exact like, terminology is but every single uh click or every single page they have to go through adds another layer of resistance and like the retention drops like 60 something percent every single time that you have to click one additional step so when you think about like video games in general you think about the console industry you think about pc industry like it costs a lot of money to build out a pc it costs a lot of money to get that console whereas your phone you're kind of like well i'm already get i already have a phone or I'm going to buy a phone on a plan that is like pretty reasonable and well, it's right here and I can play it. Anybody can play it on the shitter. You can play it when you're out of town at work. Uh, you can play it on vacation. You can play it at work. You can play it when you're chilling on the couch watching a TV show. So yeah. And also BlizzCon is supposed to be returning in 2023. It's supposed to be happening BlizzCon. presumably sometime in November. That's around typically when they do it. So if it does in fact return, like they've said it is going to, this seems like a great place to announce this massive brand new game that they've got in the works. Now, I don't suspect them to release the game this year because Blizzard is typically a company that is way more about leading up to and building up hype for their games. But maybe 2024 uh, is possible if they are really, if they have truly uh, been in development be as year. we are led to believe since uh, 2017, you know, pre-production period to knock two years off of that. So we're talking maybe four years of full development. They could be within a year or two of finishing this game. I, as I learn more and as I started to put this video together, originally it was just like talking about the leaks that were coming out recently from Jez Corden. But then I started going through all those job postings. Nothing special here. I'm not a private eye detective. This stuff's just out there. But as I went through each posting and reading each description and what content they were looking to hire 
people to create it just like laid it all out there for me it's just like i i, I experienced this moment of transcendence where i was like yeah dude there's no wow two they're not going to compete with wow as much as you want to say it's dying it's still massively successful one of the oh, biggest yeah, if not the biggest subscription based mmo they don't want to compete with that they don't probably don't want to make something even similar to that forget wow two they probably don't want to make world of starcraft they're going to make an mmo that's just in a completely a different point. direction and it seems like this survival thing that they're doing may very well be it. And there's just so much potential in there for me. And I think what's kind of rekindled my excitement is affirmation of Diablo 4. You know, however that's going to pan out when the monetization monetization and live service stuff, we'll have to see post-launch how that ends up working. But the gameplay, the game that they're crafting, the feel of the game, and Blizzard's motto of being gameplay first, I Diablo 4 confirms that to me because I'm like, yes, if there was a question about if Blizzard in 2023 could still make the games of a gameplay feel quality that they have in the past that question is out of my mind because i have the answer it's yes diablo 4 feels fantastic really excited about the idea of this mmo light uh survival game from a triple a company and the level yeah. of gameplay feel and polish that blizzard delivers it's just a lot of potential there in my Very mind cool. so i cannot wait to learn more it's exciting times and yeah i'm looking forward to getting an official announcement probably sometime this year would be my expectation but we will see. That does it for me today. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, this guy was pretty good. Uh, it's a page called Force Gaming. Go show this man some love. I just subbed myself. I'm going to share this video to you guys in chat. Be sure you go hit that guy up with some love. This was a really good video.